Topiaries are always a winner in my garden, and these myrtle topiaries, as I've shared with you before, can really handle extreme heat, extreme sunlight, just not drought. But that is my opening question of the day. I am going to share my winners with you, and I am so interested in your sharing your winners with me and with all of us. So this is definitely a video where you will want to read others' comments, please make sure to put your zone when commenting. Good morning, everyone. I thought that today I would do something a little bit different and show you some plants that are performing beautifully in the garden in these 100-degree temperatures. I previously shared some losers for this very, very hot summer. So now let me share some plants that did exceptionally well. And these are specimens that not only will I, I appreciate them now so much for how they have held up to the heat, but also to just make a mental note of these are some plants that I will not only use in future gardens, but I will probably use them in more abundance in a new garden and also in, in this garden specifically. So the first candidate, the first winner is this Blue Point Juniper that I have shown you before. It just went to seed here, either you know planted by a squirrel or a bird or some such, and I've pruned it into a topiary shape. I've showed you this many times, but now I want to really profile it from the perspective of its performance and not just its shape and form. So even in these 100 plus temperatures, look at all of the new growth it's putting out. And the new growth looks beautiful, as does that which has been there for many years. And this is in a pretty brutal location. So if you need a plant that can stand up to hot southern or western exposure, this is one for you. And I'll show you different ways I have grown it in the past, um, or I am still growing it. In the past, I grew it in a very tight conical form, Christmas tree form, and it works very well in that shape too. But this will be my plant number one, which is a beautiful blue point juniper. And parenthetically, it also has that wonderful kind of Mediterranean blue-gray color that I like so, so much. By the way, I am doing this today so that Stuart can take a little break and recover from shooting our fun wedding shower yesterday. So this is plant number one, Blue Point Juniper. And here are some more of those tiny little Blue Point Junipers. Again, these are ones that I have showed you in the past probably need to show them to you again, given that I have declared it topiary month. But these are just tiny little trees, again, that were volunteers that I dug up to have a little bit of an evergreen forest that, and I will use these inside around the holidays, around Christmas. But they have a miniature, kind of a winter wonderland look. I planted them in these faux bois containers and I believe I got these, most of these from Home Depot. And I'll continue to prune them, but even in their small unpruned state, I think they look very, very sweet and very evocative of a miniature forest. I've got one here lying on its side that I have yet to plant, but I have spied some additional little evergreens in front that I will dig up and add to my little faux bois forest. But you can see even these small ones look, continue to look very, very fresh in these 100 degree temperatures and they're putting on new growth and will make a wonderful display, not only this time of year, but, but particularly in the winter. And I'll probably mulch them with some of those tiny pine cones. So this would be part B of my first winter 
for the summer of 2022, and that is tiny blue point junipers. My next winner for the summer of 2022 would be these beautiful golden Oakland hollies. These are a Southern Living Plant Collection offering, and they have done beautifully in this spot. I've got them in pots flanking either side of the entrance to the potager, and they have done beautifully. They, the one on the right gets absolutely harsh sunlight in the late afternoon and also harsh southern exposure. It has a few browning leaves on them, which you can see my, my pruners are there resting on the post, but I can clip those off. The plant overall is very healthy and doing fine. The one opposite to it on the north side is in a little bit more shade and doing even better. Both of them are exhibiting that absolutely gorgeous golden variegation. That is a nice contrast to all of the green in the back. I, I definitely think, like the Blue Point Junipers, this is a plant that I can rely on and that is not only a winner, but will definitely be planted probably in more locations and to greater effect in my own garden and definitely on my plant list for specimens that I will want to incorporate into a new garden should I start one. So this is plant number two. We'll put a link above. This is the Golden Oakland Holly. The, they also have a solid green version, which also does well, as you would expect the, the plants in their collection to do because Southern Living Plant Collection offerings are bred after all for the South. And so we would expect the quality and the performance, but even the best plant lines and plant collections are gonna be challenged when the temperatures exceed 100 degrees for days and days on end in very dry conditions. Nevertheless, these have both performed beautifully and constitute my number two winner for the summer of 2022. Another winner for me in this intense heat has been this creeping time Time, I, I've learned a little bit about it. It requires just excellent drainage, which happily it gets in this pot surrounding the holly. But it can handle very, very strong sun. It does require more water than you would think. We think of it as being an arid tolerant Mediterranean plant, and it is, but nevertheless, when temperatures get this extreme, it really needs a little bit more water. But I can't believe this, which I just planted this year, is putting out sweet little pink flowers. And I just love thymes in general. I would say it's, it's maybe, it's not as easy to grow because it can sometimes get holes in the middle. It can just die out from too little or too much water. But I definitely love its small leaf sweetness. And it has been very much a winner in my garden of 2022. My number three winner is an edible and new to me this summer, and this is eggplant icicle. I grew these from seed, which was sent to me. I believe this was an American select variety. And growing under the tarp, it has, it has performed extremely well. The foliage is not at all pest riddled. There doesn't seem to be any kind of infestation of any kind. It hasn't suffered any kind of mildew and it is still putting out fruit, a lot of which I have already harvested. But you can see those sweet, sweet little icicle or eggplants that are coming off of and out of these sweet, sweet lavender flowers. So it's a twofer. It is not only productive, but it's also beautiful. It, it, beautiful. it makes a wonderful design counterpoint to the tiny leaves of the boxwood hedge. And I wanna go around here so I can show you an up close picture of not only the fruit itself, but these sweet, sweet flowers. And I love that coloration in my garden. These would be just a wonderful edible used as an ornamental in your garden. There's another one out there. Oh, there's there's a number of them. I'm I'm probably 
I, I'm harvesting them on this on the small side, so they'll be a little bit more tender. Typically, I think the recommendation is to harvest them when they get about six to eight inches, perhaps. I have a basket of them in my kitchen. And by the way, these, some people that came and saw the garden yesterday during the shower, even in the heat, they were absolutely charmed by this plant. And another reason to grow it is it grows not only so well in the ground, but it also grows beautifully in pots. And actually it was the one in this terracotta pot that was the first to come into fruit and be productive. And the pot, as you can see, doesn't even have to be very large. Beautiful plant, beautiful production, and beautiful flowers. What more could you ask of an edible in a garden with temperatures exceeding 100 degrees? My next winning plant is another edible and I don't know that I have the specific varieties for these, but these are shishito peppers, which I think most of you would agree with me are just absolutely divine, cooked with a little bit of olive oil and sea salt in your wrought iron skillet. It is a beautiful plant. The peppers are sweet and cute. And can I also say it has just performed beautifully and produced even in these very high temperatures. This one isn't even under the tarp. And this has been a more productive pepper than the others that I have grown. I'm, I'm growing chili, uh, chili pie and dragonfly and some other peppers. This one thus far has definitely been the most productive. And I think it, it, is a winner not only in containers like I've this I've got this one let me show you growing just in a bucket elevated on a plant stand but it also would do beautifully in the ground and I'm, I'm thinking ooh in a hanging pot this would be beautiful growing up a trellis and secured a small trellis it would be beautiful so this would be another winner from this hot as the Dickens summer of 2022, Shishito peppers. Well, my next winning selection is actually a winning combo that just kind of happened by accident when I plucked a large pot of asparagus fern into this border that was denuded for a number of different reasons. But look at how gorgeous its delicate foliage looks in juxtaposition to this Little Miss Figgy. And this is a Southern living plant. Interestingly, I have several Little Miss Figgies. The ones in pots were very productive. They overgreened in the, in the greenhouse. The one in the ground has not produced. And I'm, I, at one point, I think one of you followers gave me a suggestion. Nevertheless, I really grow this plant more for its beautiful foliage for its value, its decorative value in and out of the kitchen. I love to use it on charcuterie trays and in flower arrangements. But this combo of this asparagus fern and Little Miss Figgy is just beautiful. And this asparagus fern is just putting out all sorts of interesting new fronds with very, very delicate growth. And I can't tell you the specific variety on this. It was given to me. But boy, is it performing well. And we all know asparagus fern does, does very well in the heat. So this is definitely a combo in, in containers or in the garden that I will replicate in the future. That's Little Miss Figgy, another Southern living plant. We will give you a link in the description and on Instagram and in a card above and this beautiful asparagus fern. More beautiful together than apart. Well, my next winner is gonna be very familiar to you and no doubt on your winning list, regardless of the temperatures in your garden. And that would be Suncolius. These are specific 
colors that were part of the living plant collection we designed for my QVC online uh, signature collection. And sadly, for a number of different constraints, we couldn't bring them to to market, but hopefully we will next year. But this really deep reddish burgundy in particular, I think is captivating. It's doing beautifully underneath the tarp. It actually was performing well even before I put the tarp in place. And it provides what little color I have in the garden right now. But you can see that once it cools off enough for the petunias, for some asters and for some other things to bloom, it's really going to be spectacular. And what I love about it is it's an annual almost used as a shrub in this instance. They're in pots, so they're somewhat elevated, bringing their interest in their color to a different height, which is a good tip. But they're very, very dramatic. These are south facing. Again, I think performing extra beautifully because they're under the tarp. So if you can give them enough water and remember to keep them pinched out because that will give you a lot more plant inventory for this fall that you can use in hanging baskets and things like that and hopefully over winter for next year but also it makes the plants themselves that much bushier and that much more lush looking in the context of your flower border and they look beautiful with these muted tones these blue gray tones that I love so much but also with the greens and just a wonderful textural addition to the garden. Definitely, definitely a winner in this very stingy summer of 2022. Well, for my next award-winning selection, <clears throat> I give you the Humble Boxwood, which you would probably be surprised if it didn't show up somewhere on my list. And here are some different varieties that have performed very well. My very favorite variety is probably Green Mountain because of its affinity for, for making topiary, but also because it is just a great performer in this heat. Now, this is growing underneath the tarp, but actually I've got some growing in full sun that is also doing very, very well. So it's green mountain in these pots. And by the way, these two specimens were transplanted from the front yard, from in the ground to in pots, and they are still doing amazingly well and adapting to their new potted environment. But another winner, you can see the gumdrop shape in the distance and you can see everything in the potage, which I have brutalized several times by cutting it back hard. This is wintergreen. And while it doesn't hold its form as well because it grows much more quickly, this wintergreen boxwood is tough. If you can give it a little bit of coverage and enough moisture, and actually this was doing fine even before I covered it. I just didn't want to take the risk of having massive damage to this huge investment piece, focal point in my garden. And this is winter green, and it has recovered beautifully from all of the hard clipping. So those are two varieties. Let me give you a third. The first here was green mountain. This one is winter green. My next plant category, an ornamental shrub that has performed just stellar, is let's just say the category of abelias in general. This one, I can't remember the exact variety. I believe it was called Gold Star. It's a beautiful variegated abelia that grows a little bit taller and I love all of its opening. It's kind of lacy growth form so that other bloomers can grow up and through its branches like that noisette rose in the back. But I also, I don't have any, but definitely on my list for my next garden is Canyon Creek Abelia. This is a sweet, sweet little Miss Lemon Abelia. I've showed you this many times. This is a Southern living plant. This, I, I am in the future going to very much plant more of it in pots where it also does well. And it has such a sweet, compact growing habit that does well to container culture, 
but I also love it because the variegation on both this variety and the Gold Star is it looks great with color punctuations of, of any hue. I love it with blues and purples, pinks, but if you like the hotter colors on the spectrum, it looks great with deep maroon, with burgundy, with very, very deep purple and it is definitely another winner for both in-ground culture and also potted culture as an invaluable ornamental because of both its growth habits and because of its tough performance in 100 degree temperatures. I am going to make a bet here that some of your Vinca Minor might look like mine which is just very tired and wilted and browning and is suffering really intense heat stroke. As, as are a lot of my other ground covers like Ajuga, even some of my money wart, it's just very hot and it's hard to keep enough water on them for them to do well, especially if they are growing in some sun and don't have any shade protection in the afternoon or in the hottest part of the day. So I give you as an alternative, these sweet little low growing flirt Nandinas, which if you can accommodate this type of ground cover, a very tiny shrub growing as ground cover, then I would highly recommend it. I love the color of it. I, you can see here about how tall it will get growing low in the foreground, in the front of a border. This one was planted a little bit later, so it's a little bit shorter. But that is Flirt Nandina, and I think they are about as cute as, as any plant can get. I love the purple in the foliage. I just love the delicacy that they bring to the garden and the wonderful textural quality that they provide here growing against another southern living plant. This is my beloved uh, oak leaf hydrangea, Terra. But the other asset it has is it can grow in sun or in shade and it remains looking good and it's tough and it wasn't very difficult to get established. So that would be another winner. Again from, this is a southern living plant, I, I would say Flirt Nandinas definitely are on my keeper list. And maybe you should put them on yours as well. Though not a plant, as I have told you ad nauseum, a great problem solver to intense heat as a ground cover is just using flagstone and gravel, maybe with a little decorative brick thrown in but this can handle all sorts of 100 degree temperatures and remains attractive and beautiful and functional, requires no watering and solves just a milieu of different kinds of problems that you might have in your garden. So a winner and though not, uh, doesn't photosynthesize, but nevertheless, I think it's definitely in the winning category. And that's any kind of ground cover that doesn't require watering and that doesn't, that is permeable, that, that won't have runoff when it rains. And all of this, this gravel is definitely uh, permeable and can soak up the rain when it does come down, which will then enhance and nourish anything that is growing around its 